Hello everyone. So today I have a hopefully pretty simple exercise for you, but in it I hope to demonstrate the usefulness and the importance of knowing how to control shading and partially using the edge split modifier. And then we will move on to, and it actually combine at the same time, discuss the subsurface modifier and the mean crease modifier within the subsurf modifier. These are all really important subjects to understand. So first of all, let's go ahead and tab into edit mode and then go ahead and uh, right click and select this and delete this face. And then we can go ahead and shift A and add in a, um, a cylinder. Now we could reduce the number of vertices, but let's just leave it at 32, I guess. That's all right, an all right number. And then we're going to delete the, the bottom face. And actually we'll go ahead and do ortho view and make sure it's the right size. And yes, they are similar size, so that's good. All right, so I will also tell you how to do uh, bridge edge loops. So if you select a ring of edges and then you go ahead and uh, hit control E and bridge edge loops under edge data, you can, sorry, it's not under edge data. It's just on the control E menu. Then you can bridge these edge loops. Now, actually, let's go ahead and move this cylinder down a bit. All right, so how would you make the shading and the smoothing on this look right? Well, we could just like try and select some certain faces and hit smooth, and maybe we could even like manually select, okay, let's smooth these ones, right? There's a better way, but you could try something like this. Now the actual better method would be to smooth everything. And this is gonna proper the tools menu, open with T. And you go ahead and uh, open the modifiers menu. If you add a edge split modifier, it kind of creates a cut where it thinks that the angle is sharp enough where it's appropriate. Now in this case, it didn't work out fantastically well, but you see that without it, the bottom of the cube like, is not treated as a separate face at all. Now what's happening right here is that it's smooth enough here that some weirdness is happening. So what we could do is we can go ahead and select some, now you could do this in um, vertex mode, but let's say you wanted to do just this edge and this edge. If you're in vertex mode, it'll also select this edge right here. So what I'm just saying is if you wanted to do these two edges, but if I swap to vertex mode, it selects a third edge. So be careful if you're doing this type of stuff, whether it's doing a mean crease or doing a, marking a seam for UVs or whether you're, you're marking a sharp edge uh, for edge split modifier, you want to be careful about whether or not you're in edge mode. Anyways, so let's select these edges. And if we go ahead and edge data, we can mark these as sharp. And what do you know, that almost looks good. Not quite, we're not quite there yet. I know it doesn't look great yet. Now, what we can also do is, uh, by the way, if you want to turn off seeing these, you can also go and hit the properties panel, N, and you can toggle seeing these sh sharp edges or not. I'm going to toggle them off while I talk about our next modifier, which is the subsurf modifier. And by the way, we will get some very odd results if the subsurf modifier is applied after the edge split modifier. The edge split modifier, as is implied by the name, literally splits the edges. So when, if you apply this modifier, um, right now, if I press L, it selects an entire like, group of connected vertices, right? I'm not sure if you knew that, but it's a good way to select objects. And um, if I apply this, if I hit L, oh wow, look, these are all separate faces. And I could probably should, should probably undo this. I would not recommend ever applying the edge split modifier until the very end. And you might be saying to yourself, hey, well, the edge split modifier, why would I want something that increases increases the number of vertices? Well, it's necessary for things to look good, basically. Um, and all, you know, basically any software that you use that does this type of, of you know, shading, um, if they have smoothing groups, even if it doesn't tell you the vertices are increasing, that's because the modifier is not applied. When you export these smoothing groups, as you might call them, it will increase the number of vertices. So bear that in mind. Anyways, to make this model look actually good, we're gonna have to do the subsurf modifier. And again, if we do it after the, all, the edges are split, how the subsurf modifier actually works is an easy way to demonstrate that, is get a cube and subsurf it. And we'll actually go ahead and check edit mode first. So if you subsurf it, you see that where there was once one face, there's now four faces. Same applies to the top, there's now four faces. So basically add, each level adds four faces and it sort of averages them towards each other. So if you know that they average towards each, each the, um, the existing geometry, that means that if you add geometry like on one side, it's gonna kind of tighten that crease, if that makes sense. Now, there's no way to do that besides adding geometry. Sometimes you have to add geometry to tighten up a crease. But if you select uh, a ring of edges, if you do a mean crease, you get a very similar effect. 
and you don't increase geometry that way. Now you have to bear in mind, like not only are you, am I adding uh, a ring of vertices, so four vertices, but because the model is going to be subsurfaced, it's going to add a lot more geometry. So you do not really want to add more controlling edges in subsurf than you have to. Now, like, if you're imagining, like if I just create a, um, a, a cube, and imagining like, you know, at some point you're going to need to have more control over it, right? So if I just have like you know, this cube, and actually let's go ahead and do median point. So if I subsurf it, you know, let's say, where's the subsurf modifier? Here it is. You can also do it, do it by control too. Anyways, so you don't want to add more control, you know, edges and vertices than you absolutely need. And that's because it's going to make it harder to work with, and it's going to increase the amount of geometry in total. Um, so, like, you know, if you start adding increases, it's going to significantly change how this object behaves. So now you have sort of like a an object which is smooth, on a, on a, or it's got a hard crease except on the top. And so kind of, if we up the, you know, resolution here, you see it's sort of an interesting shape. And now let's think about it like this. If I wanted some sort of slope, you know, um, you don't want to add more geometry than you need, right? So if, all, if I just need a straight slope, I shouldn't go about adding a bunch of edge loops, especially when it's subsurfed, right? But if I do need to control the, if I wanted some sort of like, you know, gradual slope that was like more like this, then absolutely go ahead and add, you, you'll need more, essentially, you know, more edge loops and more essentially control over the mesh. You know, the more vertices a mesh has, the more points you have to control. So you get more exact control, but with that additional fine control, you have, of course, it's, it's harder on your CPU or harder on your processor. And it's it's requires, it can be more difficult. You don't want an excess of vertice de density. Anyways, so all that being said, we know that we have to click this to move the subsurf modifier up in the stack. And this doesn't look good, but it will in a second. So if you're thinking like, where, where do I want this to the subsurf modifier not to smooth things? Well, it's, I think it's pretty obvious that it would look better if this was all mean increased, right? Now, in some cases, you might also want to add a mean increase where the mesh is sharp. And um, one thing to avoid is putting a sharp, hitting control E, edge data, and marking a sharp edge where there shouldn't be one. I'll, I'll show you guys an example of that in a second after I apply these mean increases. So just doing this gives you an idea of how much better uh, control you get by adding a, um, an edge split. Now, what you're going to notice here is you're going to get pinching. And this is actually a good discussion or a good uh, a reason that it's wise to be careful of subsurf modifier, it doesn't do well with triangles. So we see I have a lot of triangles right here. So if I actually just like go ahead and delete these, some of these vertices, and actually it might be useful to uh, mirror my object. So let's go ahead and mirror the object first. So as I was saying, um, it might be useful to limit the amount of edge loops here. So if I go ahead and like dissolve some of these, it'll start to pinch less because it's it's dealing with less triangles unnecessarily. Like you don't want unnecessary triangles. It's gonna do some weird stuff basically. Um, and as, as far as where the mirror goes in the edge in the uh, modifier stack, definitely before the edge loop, and in this case also before the subsurf modifier. So now we have a much nicer looking model. In fact, we could probably get away with removing or even just uh, sliding these towards each other, um, these, this, these edge loops. And if we do that, let me go ahead and merge them. Now we have less of that pinching issue. Still a little bit of weirdness right there. And it's hard to fix, probably. Probably this, this slid a little bit over. We would fix that a bit. And perhaps pumping the resolution might deal with it a bit. And now it looks pretty nice. So if you're doing some sort of column and you want to transition, you know, this is probably more geometry than you would want to use. But point being, you basically, you have to, you shouldn't rely on edge loops for doing most of your subsurf stuff. You know, in a lot of cases, and I actually forgot to show you guys what it looks like if you do an, um, a sharp edge where there shouldn't be one. It's kind of hard to see. Um, it might not even show up in this case because of the subsurf modifier. If I turn that off, it might. And let's see if it'll show up. In this case, it doesn't show up very well. Perhaps if I add just a, an extremely small amount of, uh, you know, pushing it out. Let's see if that shows up at all. And now it does, right? Like, so you see how there's a kind of that weird shading issue there. 
And like if it was not if it was totally flat, you wouldn't even see it, probably. But uh, to be avoided, basically you don't want to ever put a sharp edge on a completely smooth surface. But other than that, you know, you could be careful. You know, um, you might want to have some sort of you know sharp edge there for whatever reason. If you want to, you want it to have the appearance of a seam. You know, if you're making a shirt, shirts actually have seams on them. You know, it, it might be appropriate to uh, have on a have on a, a put a, a sharp edge right on the top of a, the edge of a shirt sleeve to give it kind of a crease there. Um, that's something to consider. And you know, by the way, you don't have to perfectly mirror. So what, what do we have here for edge data? We can do like marking a sharp edge for shading. We can do an edge crease to control subsurf modifier, and we can mark a seam for UV unwrapping. And this, this tutorial will not go into UV unwrapping. That's this is too much for one <laughs> subject, uh, one video. But um, basically, you don't have to keep those overlapping. In some cases, it is wise. Um, you know, if you have an object which is very has some a lot of sharp, where it really it does have some sharp edges, like let's say it's some sort of you know armored vehicle, and there's like a ninety degree edge. You know, that's a totally a good spot to both put a, a sharp, mark a sharp and mark a seam, and perhaps mark an edge crease. All right, and so far you guys probably haven't got a good idea of why it's necessary to manually mark sharp edges. Let's go ahead and just create a flat plane, make it smooth, and then um, we can start you know, adding, adding some vertices to it, or adding some edge loops. So let's say I just move this up a little bit with proportional editing. So it's kind of smooth, right? And let's say uh, we have a protrusion out of this, and it's actually facing the wrong direction, I think. I would rather it be the other direction. So let's go ahead and flip direction. So let's say we have a protrusion coming out of it. So let's say that we wanted this protrusion right here to have a short, you know, to be a, its own separate, se separate set of faces. But, and let's say perhaps we were trying to save edges. So, you know, maybe we had a, uh, a fairly sharp point in this whole series of uh, edges. So right now, this is pretty sharp, right? Let's go ahead and select everything over here and move it over. Now, again, you might just want to smooth it, but let's say we had to turn this down. Could do edge split. So here's the issue. We're ha not having a sharp line right here where we want it. We're getting a sharp line right here where we don't want it, and another sharp line here where we don't want it. So how do we fix this issue? Well, you have to, if it's not smoothing, where it's supposed to be smoothing, so it's supposed to be smoothing right here, right? And it's, it's also not, it's not sharp where it's supposed to be sharp. So how to fix this, you have to default upwards. And we have to keep smoothing up until it smooths where we want it to. And then if it's smoothing where it shouldn't be smoothing, then we go back and we, we go to Control E, Edge Data, Mark as a Sharp. And that way we fixed it. If, again, if we didn't do that, if we just uh, you know, went to like 30 degrees and we, we removed all our, our sharp edges, this is not really, you know, in theory, what I was trying to achieve. So basically the only way to have perfect, you know, the fine control you need in some cases. What you have to do is set the split angle high enough that everything that you need, need to smooth actually does smooth. And then when things that aren't supposed to be smooth, if they are smoothing <laughs> because of the split angle, you have to go back through and then select the edges and go ahead and mark them as sharp. And a you know, similar thing with, with subsurface modifier. If I wanted, you know, um, let's go ahead and apply this before the uh, edge split. If I wanted to have you know really nice creases here, um, I would have to go through and mark I mean, increase. So there's actually sort of a it, it would accentuate this, the shading difference that I, I set up with the uh, edge split modifier. So go ahead and you know mark that as sharp, and that way you get a really nice edge that way. So combining a mean crease and a sharp edge can make a really nice you know distinction and dividing line between parts of your mesh. And if you don't do this, it's going to be hard to achieve a similar effect. You're going to have to you know use lots of unnecessary holding edges and with a subsurf modifier. And that's just a, this is bad at practice in general. Uh, not the type of thing you wanna be doing. All right guys, and one last note I wanted to tell you about subsurf modifier is that it doesn't handle triangles very well, which, and they're also bad for animation in general, by the way. But so you see this, this intersection of, was basically four triangles. You know, if I actually start removing some of these triangles, if I just dissolve this edge right here, it doesn't look as bad. You don't have that kind of pinching issue. All right, guys, well, that's it for this tutorial. I would strongly encourage you to play around with the mean crease within the subsurf modifier and also play around with edge split and marking and sharp edges. These are really important tools, and I don't think that they get mentioned often enough with relation to beginner or even intermediate modeling. Extremely important skills, and best if you get a basic grasp of them as soon as possible. All right, guys, well, have a nice day. Bye.